On this episode of Barracuda Restoration, how to restore a Mopar A-body steering column. I'm Angel Garrido, and I'm restoring my dad's 1969 Plymouth Barracuda Fastback. Follow along as I show you how I restore this classic A-body muscle car to OEM standards. I include suspension, steering, differential, engine, interior, brakes, trim, and more. It's all here on Barracuda Restoration. This video will show you how I restored a Mopar A-body steering column. Here are a few of the chapter locations in case you want to skip to a specific topic. There are two types of steering columns, manual ones that shift on the floor. Second are automatics with shifting on the column. Refer to your Plymouth service manual for your type. I will be restoring the Chrysler automatic steering column on my 69 Plymouth Barracuda with power steering. To get to the steering column out of the car, you have to remove the end coupler from the power steering box. First punch out the roll pin in the coupler. It will drive right through the coupler using a round punch, not tapered. Second, disconnect the shift linkage rod from the lever at the lower end of the steering column. To remove the steering wheel, disconnect the negative ground cable from the battery. Turn the horn cap counterclockwise to remove. Disconnect the wire at the horn switch and remove the three screws attaching the horn ring switch to the steering wheel. Remove the steering column nut and washer. Remove the steering wheel with a steering wheel puller. I used a harmonic balance puller tool. Do not bump or hammer on the steering shaft to remove the wheel. Under the dash, disconnect the turn signal harness wires. Remove the plastic steering column cover from the dash to expose the steering column bracket. Unbolt the floor plate firewall cover from the firewall and the floor pan. Now disconnect the column ground wire. Remove the three bolts holding the column bracket to the dash. Now you can pull out the steering column from the firewall. Carefully pry the lower coupling from the steering gear worm shaft. Then remove the column assembly out through the passenger compartment. While doing the disassembly, take plenty of pictures and video, and bag and tag all the parts. Remove the coupler from the bottom of the shaft. Now let's take off the support brackets. Remove the column bracket from the column jacket. There are four half inch captured washer bolts. This mounting bracket connects to the steering column to the instrument panel, and it allows the column to slide forward during a crash. Working on the far end, remove the two screws holding the lower column bearing to the column jacket. Note, you cannot remove the o-ring and floor plates until you remove the outer steering shifter shaft. Bring the complete unit to your workbench or use a vise with a special holding column tool to hold the steering column assembly. I did not use one. Working on the housing assembly, this is what you should be looking at. 
Remove the three retainer plate screws. Altogether, those screws hold the retainer plate, which holds the turn signal switch to the housing. The two top right screws hold the dial light if you have one. It illuminates the shift points. One long hex screw holds the turn signal lever. Remove it. Pull off the turn signal switch assembly from the housing upward and out of the way. Remove the top circular snap ring clip with snap ring pliers from the upper end of the steering shaft. Now remove the rubber upper column bearing insulator. Remove two small Phillips screws and lift off the wiring trough. Now if you're going to keep the turn signal switch assembly, pull slightly on each wire while inserting a small screwdriver above and below the terminal to release the tangs. Then pull the wire from the connector. Remove the two bearing housing retaining castle nuts. Install the steering shaft removing tool and press the shaft out of the upper bearing. Some guys just make one. I had enough room to use a bearing puller and remove the upper bearing that way. Just remember, do not bump or hammer on the steering shaft to remove. The shaft should drop right out of the housing column jacket. The shaft itself is solid. The shifter is hollow and fits over the steering shaft. A manual shift column does not have the shifter tube in it. The two-piece telescoping transmission gear shift tube is interconnected by plastic inserts and shear pins. Upon impact, the shear pins break off and the shaft gradually telescopes against resistance. If your shaft is missing these pins, do not use. There is no safe way to repair this. Bumping, jolting, and hammering on the steering shaft or the gear shaft tube must be avoided during all service operations. Now that the gear shaft tube is out of the column jacket, you can remove the floor plate assembly from the jacket. Loosen the Allen screw that holds the collar onto the shaft. Remove the wavy washer in the column jacket that puts pressure on the collar. Drive out the gear shift lever pivot pin. This is a roll pin. Now you can remove the lever and spring from the shift housing. Unsnap the dial pointer from the lug on the gear shift housing.
remove the dial retaining plate and the dial itself. Remove the shift lever gate from the bearing housing by removing the two attaching screws. Get all of your column parts that need painting and mildly sandblast and prime them. Any shaft parts can be put under a wire wheel and buffed to knock off any surface rust. Paint the color you wish, but note that the factory painted these parts in a satin finish, not gloss. Notice the center section of the column jacket that has diamond shaped perforations. These pleats allow it to compress like a bellows from impact forces. Here are the parts needed to begin the assembly of the far end of the steering shaft column. Be sure to apply a thin coat of multi-purpose grease to all friction surfaces. Now this end goes toward the steering wheel and this end goes toward the steering box. Put on the O-ring retainer, the rubber O-ring grommet, and the floor plate before inserting the shift tube and lever. The O-ring is for moisture, smoke, and air prevention. Bolt on the O-ring retainer. The foam floor plate firewall gasket goes on next. Detroit Muscle Technologies calls it the steering column end foam seal. This foam dust seal is usually disintegrated when you take it apart. Slide the shift tube up into the column jacket. Attach the lower column bearing there is a slot for it to go into. Add the two 3-8 self-tapping retaining screws and tighten to 30 foot-pounds. The coupler connects the steering column to the steering box. The coupler assembly more than likely needs to be rebuilt. Here is one of the kits on the market. Some replacement steering coupler top seals are orange in color. The original ones were black. The coupler itself is either three or three and a half inches in length. The kit comes with everything you need, clamp, shoes, shaft pin, shoe spring, and the rubber seal. You may not need to replace the pin that goes through the shaft. Put on the rubber seal on the shaft, just don't tear it. You need to fill the coupler with grease. Use a multi-purpose grease. Pack the housing three-fourths of the way up. Put on the shoes and the spring bracket, making sure it is spring-loaded.
Carefully slide the coupler onto the shoes on the shaft. Grease will come out, so just wipe it down. Pre-bend the tangs on the cover down a bit. The key to this is pre-bending the tabs and clamping the assembly tight. I use two trigger clamps to hold it down. Punch the tabs onto the housing. I want to thank Alan Erlin for giving a great description of how to rebuild this coupler. It's located on 4cbodiesonly.com. On some couplers there is a retaining pin that must be pushed in. Put on the steering coupler cover retaining clamp. This was a later Mopar correction. To get the clamp on, spread the legs over the steering shaft. After you attach the coupler to the steering box, you will be pushing in the roll pin. Then you will put the long legs on the clamp in the roll pin holes. With that complete, there should be a small V-notch in the outer edge of the coupling. That marks the master spline location inside. This needs to be lined up with the master spline at the steering wheel end of the shaft. When assembling this, view the alignment index notch on the shaft to line up with the notch on the coupler. This is because the steering box, the coupling, and the steering wheel all have master splines and can only go on one way. If you put the coupling back together with the index mark opposite or 180 degrees out from the shaft, your steering wheel will be clocked upside down when centered. Let's work on the column housing, or the collars as they're called. Clean up the dial if it's scratched up. Remove the paint from the back. Touch up paint the dial pointer with orange luminescent paint. Spray paint the dial with white matte flat finish. The dial light will reflect off of it. Now clean up the satin finish gear shift and turn signal levers with 4 aught steel wool. Use a 1500 wet sanding sponge followed by Meguiar's Plastic X Clear Plastic Cleaner and Polish. This will shine up the plastic tips and you'll notice the difference. On my automatic transmission car, I will replace the lamp on the column shift transmission position indicator dial. It is housed inside the column under the blue bulb cover. It's sold as a steering column dial bulb. Since it's disassembled, I might as well replace it. Now let's begin to assemble the shifter housing. First put in the dial followed by the dial retainer with two screws. Replace the gear shift lever gate.
put in the two square headed bearing housing retaining bolts and do not tighten. Keep them loose at this time. In the shifter housing goes an Allen screw called the shift tube lock screw. A slot in the shifter housing will go over the shift lock key. With the dust washer installed inside the column, slide the housing onto the column shaft. With an Allen wrench, tighten the shift tube lock screw. It goes under the shift lock key. Grease up the gear shift lever tip. Drop in the gear shift lever spring. Insert the shift lever over the spring. Tap in the roll pin to hold the gear shift lever. On to the rebuild kit. This is from Mega Parts. Now the rebuild kit includes the upper steering column bearing, the bearing insulator, a snap ring or C-clip, and a circle clip and three retraining screws. Install the snap ring in the lower groove on the upper end of the steering shaft. The snap ring goes below the upper steering column bearing with the circle clip above that. This is how they should go on. The guide pointer goes over the dial. Snap the base onto the lug on the housing. The bearing housing or turn signal switch housing, which houses both the turn signal switch as well as the upper shaft bearing, slides on next. Securing the bearing housing to the column is the most difficult part of the reassembly and requires a bit of practice. Two headed square bolts serve as retainers. This is what it looks like from the back. The two square headed bearing housing retainer bolts will engage the bolts in the slots in the jacket. Don't wrench one side down at a time. They pinch the top of the column as they are tightened down in equal measures. Here is the upper steering column bearing. Slide on to the shaft. The bearing should be pressed onto the shaft. I used a length of PVC pipe and accomplished the same thing. Put on the circle clip. You will need a set of snap ring pliers to do this. Next put on the rubber bearing insulator. Note there is a staple in it. Do not remove. It was used to put pressure between the bearing and the cup and it sits in there to help retain the bearing in place during reassembly. The factory turn signal switch, or CAM, not only controls the turn signal indicators, but also is a relay point for the brake lights. 
There are several manufacturers, but I use Daniel Stern Lighting as my choice. He copies Chrysler Engineering. You can see on the back of the cam the metal wires that make contact for the signal to work. Lace the harness through the two housings. Then cautiously insert the switch into the housing which rests over the top shaft bearing. With the switch in place, the retention plate is secured with three sheet metal screws. Here is the plate's final setting place. Attach the lower left screw first. Then put in the dial shift indicator light in place, followed by the other two screws if your column has one. Here is how the illumination should look when you turn on the lights. The turn signal indicator lever is attached by the long screw that goes through the turn signal switch. The long screw tends to loosen over time and I recommend putting on a mild thread locker on the threads to prevent this. This is the terminal coupler. The coupler may not be included with your new switch. Sometimes the manufacturer will supply a diagram and instruction sheet illustrating as to where the colored wires go into the terminal coupler. Or use the factory service manual. But I recommend keeping the old harness as a reference. Before you begin, bend the turn signal wire terminal tangs outward a bit and insert into the body. When done, position the wires through the trough. Put in the screws to match. The factory put on gaffer's tape on the wires to hold them in place. The column bracket attaches to the steering column which mounts under the dash. Add the three column support spacers to the bracket. They are designed to restrain the column from being shifted toward the driver during impact. Don't leave these off. The 1967 steering columns had metal spacers. Attach the column bracket onto the steering column with the four short retaining bolts. Tighten the bolts to 95 foot-pounds. You must, however, lace the turn signal wires through the body of the bracket. Do not pinch the wires while tightening the screws or this will happen. Insert the column assembly through the floor pan opening, being careful not to damage the paint or the trim. Center the steering column coupler at the midpoint of its travel. The notch on the housing is up if your steering wheel is not on yet. This is the position of the steering box spline. After you attach the coupler to the steering box, punch in the roll pin. This is how the finished product will look like attached to the steering box. Bolt down the floor plate assembly. Bolt down the three bolts that hold the column to the dash. Attach the plastic steering column cover around the column and the dash with four screws. 
should be painted the same matte dashed color. Attach the steering column ground wire from one of the column instrument panel supports to a column bracket attachment point. Connect the turn signal wiring harness to the dash harness. There's only one way to connect it. There are two types of steering wheels, standard and sport. The sport steering wheel came in plastic or wood grain. After 50 years, my steering wheel was cracked, discolored, and rusty. There are several companies that restore them, but one of the best is the steering wheel guy, Doug Leepak out of Edmonton, Canada. He has 20 years experience and has done thousands of wheels on award-winning vehicles all over the world. To remove the canceling sprung wire that holds the contact in place, use a flat screwdriver under where the wire becomes the signal light canceling prong like this. Warning: Wear safety glasses plus hold a heavy rag over the spring. It's under high tension. Removing it will fly off and possibly injure you. You may need to replace the horn ring. Get the horn contact set from Classic Industries. When you're looking at the back of the wheel like in this picture, place the ring on the steering wheel with the power wire at the 12 o'clock position. The canceling spring is located at the 3 o'clock position. You're going to hammer the canceling spring back down onto the back of the steering wheel. Support the center of the wheel hub on a 4x4 piece of wood or something similar at least two feet high so that the rim is not touching the ground. It's a good idea to put on dielectric crease onto the turn signal switch horn contact wheel. The contact wheel rides against the steering wheel horn and gives constant power for the horn to work. This grease will make sure it spins freely. Not using it may cause the wheel to scrape against the horn ring and wear down prematurely like this. Also place dielectric grease on the horn ring. Place the steering wheel on the steering shaft with the master splines aligned. Install the retaining nut and washer and tighten the nut to 27 foot-pounds. Now install the horn switch parts with the three screws. Connect the horn switch wire. As you press on the horn switch, electrical contact is made when the horn switch makes contact. The horn pad emblem pops into the horn pad. The original horn pad, like the one on the right, had a metal band on the inside. Repops on the left don't. Attach the horn pad to the horn button by turning it clockwise. Connect the battery ground cable and test the operation of the lights and horns. With the project finally complete, the result will be incredibly satisfying. Essentially, you have a brand new steering column. And for more information, be sure to visit my website, www.barracudarestoration.com. Thanks for watching Barracuda Restoration. Plymouth is out to win you over this year. Follow your heart to your Plymouth dealer today.